Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Uh, welcome, one and all, to day five of World Unity Week. We've made it past the halfway mark of World Unity Week, and it's been extraordinary. Uh, four days so far uh, with incredible content from right around the world. And today's, uh, to, today's um, uh, is dedicated to the uh, frequency of cooperation. So um, this is a very important one. We've got some incredible content coming up. I do hear a bit of an echo there, if we can maybe get on top of that. Um, but this is an amazing uh, beginning to today, an amazing beginning to our day of cooperation, uh, which is... Uh, starting with the Earthwise Constitution. Let me say a few words about this um, because it's very, very exciting. Today we have Analu Smitsman, Anita Sanchez. Uh, just bear with me. Uh, we'll try and kill that. Sorry about that. Excuse me, guys. But today we have Analu Smitsman, Anita Sanchez, and Mariana Bozesnan with a video presentation from Jean Houston, who sends her support but was unable to join us live. These presenters are each in their own ways, global leaders and pioneers for New Earth Rising. Anna Luce is the founder of Earthwise Center and architect of the Earthwise Constitution and pledges for a planetary civilization. Jean Houston, of course, is a legend of her time. Ambassador for World Unity Week, one of the principal founders of the human potential movement, and one of the foremost visionary thinkers and doers of our time. And that is so profoundly true. We're so honored to have uh, uh, Jean come and rejoin us in World Unity Week. Uh, Anita Sanchez is a global catalyst for promoting positive change in our world through indigenous wisdom and leaders and cultures of diversity and inclusion. And of course, today is the solstice right around the world. So how appropriate to have Auntie Anita join us for this incredible program. Mariana Bozasan is a world-renowned integral investor and serial tech entrepreneur who is leveraging exponentially growing technologies to accelerate the implementation of the UN SDGs within planetary boundaries by 2050. What an amazing collection of female leaders we have today uh, to present this uh, critical uh, 16 pledges of the Earthwise Constitution. We're going to launch the 16 pledges today here in World Unity Week uh, for the Earthwise Constitution for a Planetary Civilization. Wow. As their gift for how we can create and align all of our missions during these 99 days of peace through unity for a new earth rising. Let me begin with Anna Luce. Anna Luce, it is so wonderful to have you and your incredible team here uh, in World Unity Week and welcome. Thank you so much, Ben. It's such a great pleasure to be here with you all and want to thank also all of the organizers of World Unity Week uh, and all the partners as well to making it possible to offering this platform. Uh, fantastic to be here with all of you. For some of you, it's it's very early in the morning. <laughs> I just want to present where I'm calling from um, because this is indeed solstice, but for us, this is actually our winter solstice because I'm calling from Mauritius and which is a small island close to Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. Uh, my sisters, uh, Anita and Mariana, Anita is in the United States, Mariana in Germany. <laughs> and I see many of our friends here as well and colleagues from all over the world. So I, I think that's really, really beautiful. Um, before we get deeply into this program, I'd just like us to take a moment to connect with each other so that we consciously entering this field um, and really using our collective power <laughs> uh, to strengthen and to usher in this emerging new era that is really calling us together and which I believe is also the heart and soul of what a new earth rising is about. So just let's just take a moment, just get present. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> Uh, hold for that's it for a few seconds 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 i'm hearing my voice a hundred times fascinating <laughs> that's that echo okay cool so just bring your attention here and now and letting go of whatever else you have been doing and if you're listening to this as a recording later, then just again, 
allow yourself to be fully present and here and now. And reflect for a moment what it means for us as humanity to be at the founding of the co-creation of a whole new civilization. And for the very first time in human history, we get to do this together. And we get to do it consciously. Where every one of us has a voice. So just for a moment, connect with what it means for you to be a co-architect of the co-creation of new worlds and futures. And now for a moment, connect with the warmth in your heart and feel in that warmth the power of life and how life and Mother Earth and our greater cosmos and universe is holding us all in this great field of our future becoming and supporting us all with the visions, the values, the energy, the commitments, and the perspectives, and the understandings, and the wisdom to make this great transition possible to a thrivable world and future. And with that intention, I open the field and maybe begin. Thank you so much for joining us here for the Earthrise Pledges for a Planetary Civilization for New Earth Rising. And you can think of these pledges as great friends, as medicines even, uh, as your support system. There are 16 total. I like to think of them as sacred reminders and guardians even, because we are together on a great quest a great rite of passage, and as you'll hear later, Jean Houston explain, this is the great game. We're playing the great game for our planet. We are playing the great game for the deepest transformation of our civilizations that humanity has ever seen. And each and every one of us are in that process, game changers, game makers, game shifters. So we ask you to join us in playing the great game for a thrivable world and future. And with that, I'd like to bring it to my dear sister and friend, Dr. Mariana bozi -san. She will only be able to be with us for 10 minutes because she's just recovering from a surgery and she does really need to heal. So Mariana, thank you so much for a while in the middle of your recovery, still being here with us and over to you now. Thank you. Oh, my dear friend, uh, it's a great honor and privilege for me to be here with all of you. Um, you touch me to tears, dear Anna Louise. You're an angel of light, and I'm deeply honored to be with you all. And um, the message that I'm bringing to you comes from, from the technological, economical, from business perspective, from uh, the craziness that is going out there. And uh, the Earthwise pledges are, from my perspective, uh, the most critical in addressing the existential threats that humanity is facing right now. Um, the, the latest uh, intergovernmental panel of climate change report from March of this year confirms that we all together um, have a very, very brief window of opportunity uh, to address the healing that the planet needs in order to ensure the future of life on this planet, um, namely 2050, 2350. So, and my, my colleague in the of the Club of Rome, Professor Jorgen Renders, one of the co-authors of uh, the very famous report to the Club of Rome, Limits to Growth, um, believes that humanity, and I quote, is stupid enough not to do what is perfectly doable to avoid a human-caused climate catastrophe. Now, being here with you all and having the privilege to share in this um, unity efforts, I don't think that humanity is stupid, and I'm inviting all of you to prove him wrong, which is, of course, what he 
wants us to do. So unfortunately, we do have a climate crisis, and that is unfortunately not the only existential crisis that we have. We have many cascading crises, um, tech feudalism, economic uh, disaster, financial, energy, societal polarization, and so on. We call it the meta crisis. But the Earthwise pledges show us that we can address them. And it shows us that we understand the problems, the meta crisis very well. And this is the purpose why we're inviting you to join us right now. And as an AI veteran, I can tell you from a technological perspective why there is tremendous hope in all areas of life. And we can fight the climate crisis. We can fight the run against those crises. For one, one of the most important um, changes that we have for the first time in human history is what I would invite you to search for and look at is the law of accelerated returns. That is a name that was called alive by Ray Kurzweil. And it's a law in which he points to the speed, the cost effectiveness, and the power of evolution, you and I, your and mine and us collectively, that works exponentially over time and brings us the solutions that we need to address the current crisis. And that is from a technological perspective that brings the collective human intelligence together. The, UN, the internet, the fact that we're now listening to each other, talking to one another is the response of that. That the digitalization leads to demonetization, makes it cheaper, which again leads, leads technology to democratization that enters our homes at an affordable cost. But this is not the only thing that gives us hope, should give you hope, is the convergence of all of these technologies that make a computer, a telephone, a smartphone possible because they all converge and create this extraordinary abundance and make it possible. So everybody can become an entrepreneur in this extraordinary field. And the Earthwise pledges help us address the small window of opportunity where the planet gives us the breather to address the climate crisis. Um, and build the new sectors of the society, which are transforming in ways that humanity as a culture has never seen before. And to that, I count the information sector, like Gutenberg, you know, who invented the printing press. We are at this next level of evolutionary, uh, cascading evolution and hope and transformation of humanity. Uh, where we can save our democracies, where we can educate our children at, at zero cost, where we can develop our societies. And these pledges are helping us to do. Another sector that I'd like to point out to, do that, uh, to you that is extreme, extraordinarily important is the energy sector, where we use photons instead of fossil fuel uh, to, to bring energy and abundance to all homes. And transportation is another one, transportation for all, where the con convergence of demand, um, on-demand transportation with electric uh, vehicles and with, uh, um, uh, what we call it, the um, autonomous driving, I forgot, brings us together and brings the abundance that we need to connect with each other more often. And of course, food. Food created out of cells through precision fermentation instead of killing animals. So these are all transformations that I just wanted very briefly to invite you to look into, to, to give you hope, because those transformations will enable us to reduce 99% of the CO2 emissions by 2035, which is of course, and beyond, this is what we need. And it's here now, and the pledges will bring us together in order to join forces and address the most, you know, what the planet wants from us. So join us and uh, thank you for having me. It's been an honor and a privilege. Thank you so much, dear Mariana, and for this, you know, very powerful perspective. I mean, I really love because 
you have that clarity, but you also have the expertise and experience uh, because every word that you've just said is because you're working in this field and have been for decades. So you're at the forefront of these changes. So thank you so much. It's really important <laughs> that we remember this so that this is like active hope. There's reasons to hope. Uh, and now when we couple that with the human heart uh, and the human wisdom, uh, then we have the human transition for the energy and the resource transition to a thriveful world and future. So thank you. Uh, wish you good recovery, full healing. <laughs> I know that you need to rest now. Really, thank you so much for being with us here and uh, all our love. <laughs> Great. And Dan, we'd love to hear now from Gene Yusin's video because he really sets the great context. And after that, we're going to Anita to go deeper into the vision. And while we're waiting for the video, please share in the chat. Um, that's wonderful for us to get a sense. There you are. This, this is the women at their best working together to spread the floral essence around the world. New mind, a different use of the body, a tapping into the soul of things, a telling of the new story. A lot of our work has to do with tuning into the new story that is trying to happen, a bringing a kind of fertility to it that allows us to, to dream the higher dream, to become the time, to become the essence of the higher dream that is trying to enter into time. So those of you who know, and who know that we do know, <laughs> and are knowers themselves, you out there who recognize this is a powerful moment in present evolutionary history, where it is women working together at such high and deep levels that allow us to create the new game of human continuity on this planet, maybe ultimately on others. Being stirred from the great oneness of being, the cosmic Consciousness, not the cosmic con, <laughs> but the consciousness that transcends all the falling aparts that are always a part of a time of transition. When you go back to the 14th century where everything was breaking down in Europe, yes, a terrible century, it was followed by the Renaissance, the Renascita, the rebirth, the sense of the great unities. When, when you look at someone like Leonardo, what was he looking at? What was he looking for? He was looking for relationship, the way of the interaction, interpenetration of things, of beings, of people, of buildings. He looked for essence. That's what we're looking for now. And the essence is the great love field that sustains maintains and recreates the world anew. The great new song of being. Well, you know, the first book that I ever read was not fun with Dick and Jane. It was called The Book of Games. My father was a comedy writer for people like Bob Hope and all, and so everything had a kind of game quality to it. So I, I just devoured that book. As soon as I could read, that's what I read. And uh, the game of high games was always what was the undercurrent of my life, you know. And I played games with Teilhard de Chardin, as I told you. And I played games with my teachers, and I played games with the always, the dogs and the cats and the animals, who were always up for the games and were always geniuses of the game. What is the nature of the game? The game is the way that we get beyond our stuckness and our encapsulation of ourselves as ones who are just put on earth to persist and to do what we can in the spite of all the forgetfulness. In the game, if you see life as the high game, you don't forget because you are all together in a process of mutual 
co-creative discovery. And once you're in that process, then all of the usual schluck nonsense, forgetfulness goes away and you are spirited and you are ready to take on the rest of the game, which is co-creation with the cosmos herself <laughs> to create a finer earth, a better person, a more noble spirit, and to have a great deal of fun and inspiration and co-creativity with it. Yes, my friends, it's all about the game. And that's what I like to think that you're all doing together. We're all, we're all doing it together. Because we're trying to find the way in which the great game is part and parcel of everything that we are and do. Once we know ourselves as high gamesters, then we can never really fall apart as we're used to doing. And if we do, it's to find the pieces, all the pieces of ourselves, of the game, and of the society that is the great oneness of being. That's the game we're playing. People sometimes say to me, well, what is the nature of this game? What is it for? It's not for making more points or triumphing over another. No, it's about huh, finding the ways to the co-creation of a great new civilization or civilizations that are so unique and spirited in their self-discovery that the nature of discovery, self, other, civilization, culture becomes what we are here to do and be. And by such doing and being, we stop boring God. <laughs> and we then are elevated, graduated to yet a still higher game of being. Cosmic co-creators. That's what we are. We are living in the most interesting time in human history. I mean, other times thought they were it. They weren't. This is it. <laughs> you know, as the native people say, that we are the ones we've been waiting for. These are the times we are the people, we are the elements of transformation and transition. What you do, how you think, how you work together, all of these will make the difference as to whether we evolve or perish. These are the great changing times and you are part of being the change becoming the change that makes the change. This is it. These are the times and we are the people. So wonderful to see her like that. That's a great pleasure of being with her uh, in person at her place. So this, I recorded this during our many game-changing conversations as we were working on our third book, which is about uh, the great game. And you can see here, if you want to be a game game changer, you need some pretty strong pledges. And that's where the context of the 16 pledges. Uh, where we take on the call, we answer the call, we steward for thriveability, we change how we play the game of life on planet Earth, and becoming the new worlds is important. But in order to go deeper, let us now hear from our sister Anita. Could you share with us uh, about the vision of the yes. Earth Life Constitution for Planetary Civilization? Yes, I'm honored to. I'm honored to be with all of you, not only my sisters, but everyone who's listening in and um, those who are um, going to be listening later. And um, I'm Nawa, uh, which is Azteca. Uh, and I'm learning about the other part of my indigeneity, which is from the Amazon. And um, I invite, as I see all of you listening and watching, I invite you to listen with the softest part of your ears and just allow your heart to expand. For the cooperation to occur, we need that to happen. And so we'll, I would invite you to read together with me the vision of 
the Earthwise Constitution. And it's very, very important that we have this vision in mind before we go later into the uh, into the pledges. So with that, I invite you, if you can, if you can read it, uh, to read along with me. You're muted, so you don't have to worry about uh, any kind of stumbling or anything else. But just uh, again, with that expanding heart, let's read our vision. Uh, we have become a planetary civilization, civilization, and thriving communities of life as wise joyful and loving partners of our earth. Imagine yourself walking into the future world of a planetary civilization, the future of a wiser, more mature humanity. You are one of its ancestors, a world where children are happy and thriving and our elders are cared for and honored. Our cultures are rooted in compassion. We act as responsible future ancestors in partnership with our earth and with care for the evolutionary process of life. Our cities, villages, and communities are alive with the intelligence and wisdom of nature, providing thriving homes for all. We have learned how to honor and work with the life-giving capacities of our earth while caring for the multiple dimensions of life we share. Our societies have become diverse and fertile gardens that serve as ecological niches of abundance that are overflowing with art, song, music, dance, and joy. The earth is thriving with healthy air, drinkable rivers, oceans there that teem with life, fertile living soil, and compassionate food for all. In this world, each person, you, all of us, are living the exquisite genius of their personal and collective potentials as we have become the future humans of a planetary civilization, as co-creators of thrivable worlds and futures in partnership with life. This is a world you help to form as its future ancestor, born from the future potentials that together brought to life. And you may smile as you've read this or you listened and you're their expanding heart, because indeed we are those people. We are this. And I would like to share with you a blessing as well. But before I do that, one of the things that came out many is just so important of my indigenous ancestors who have had challenges and continue to, like all of us have challenges, but know that that vision, that the promise of living systems that we are part of, not separate from, will allow us to continue. So at different times and different prophecies has been told that they tried to bury us, but they forgot we were seeds. And indeed, we are seeds, and collectively, we are life-seeking life. And that just stood out for me very much in this vision where we know that it is time for us to sing our songs, do our dances, be in community, and be in ceremony. And in doing that is not negating the responsibility the actions that we will get into it after my blessing with the pledges, but rather reinforce our strength and our resilience to do it with joy and also when the times get really tough to know we're never alone. There's all of us. There's all of us. So with that, I invite you all my relations to lower or close your eyes as I give a blessing on this amazing solstice. And uh, Annalise already acknowledged that we're in the summer solstice in the north, where I am, and in the winter solstice in the south. Nonetheless, it is the solstice. And as I do every morning, I get up before sunrise and receive the seeds of light. And Annalise has been with me as we do that. And so I'd invite you, as you listen to this blessing, imagine receiving the seeds of light from the solstice that is providing us all the nourishment, all the enlightenment, all the collective knowing that no one is left out. Everyone, every being, two-legged and other, is being served and nourished for this time and for the future. So with that, take a deep breath and exhale, listening with the softest part of your ears and expanding heart. Great spirit, 
Thank you for this solstice time. Ancestors, ancestors of everyone that is here now and that will be listening later, continue to guide us. All in this gathering of World Unity Week and long after. To put our hearts and minds together in cooperation to listen to the divine voice of you and of Mother Earth, that we might at this threshold of change precipitate renewal, the new. Thank you for all that you give us, for the breath we breathe, for the fire within our body that gives us energy, for the waters of the wombs that wash our minds and bring the dreams, the visions in night and day. For you, Mother Earth, we move about your face imbued with the power and the peace of the bones of our ancestors and our living relations. Thank you for the sacred wind that is purifying and carrying the voices we need to hear, for carrying all that we are exploring together during World Unity Week and specifically today during solstice for co cooperation and the Earthrise Constitution and pledges. Let the sacred vo voices come through. Your voice, our voices for life in this gathering. All my relations, in beauty we walk, in beauty we walk, in beauty we walk, in beauty we walk. Take a couple of deep breaths. And then you can open your eyes and be with here with us. And then I will pass it to Annalise to get us started on the pledges. Thank you, Aho. Uh, Aho, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is so beautiful. I feel that. Can you all feel that too? <laughs> Please share with us in the chat what's alive for you in your body as well and what you feel in our collective field together and I will guide us now briefly just for about uh, five minutes give you a bit of an essence of the pledges and I just want to presence with that first is that indeed the Earthrise Constitution is based on the wisdom of living systems um, and you know the, the concepts behind that is that every system every living system in the universe has a constitution you may never think about it in that way but these are the sacred and natural laws so the constitutions of living systems are cosmologically given and when we realize that as what is also confirmed by the latest research of a new paradigm in science and consciousness that we're living fundamentally in a universe that is unified that means that we are ourselves living systems of unity isn't that amazing and that we have within us a constitution of unity where we need to apply this so yes i'd love to uh, if you could bring up the pledges number four <laughs> and i can share with you if you a little bit of a taste of what this is about and great that's it that's the first pledge so this is based on article seven of the constitution and now in these pledges it takes the 16 commitments of the constitution into action as a, as a pledge that you can make and if you go to the link that we've shared in the chat or if you're listening that is earthvicecenter.org slash game slash pledges uh, which you also can find on world unity week website so if you are going to that link you will find that all the pledges and when you sign up there you'll also be able to receive the pdf of this of these pledges so that you can work with it yourself at home or for your work and we've put under every pledge an i take action by that is really to inspire you so also with the way to work with these pledges is read it out loud for yourself once but then also see from your own wisdom and your own guidance what are the words that are coming to you. The pledges, the 16 pledges, uh, are shared in a quadrant structure. Mm -hmm. So the first four pledges, they are all about answering the call. You see that written on the top of the pledge. The second quadrant is about stewarding for thriveability. The third one is about changing how we play the game of life on planet Earth. And the fourth quadrant is all about becoming the new world, and so becoming the new earth rising. So the first one that you can see here is, 
I pledge to answer the call of my future human potential of the emerging new era. So maybe just even say that out loud with me. I pledge to answer the call of my future human potential of the emerging new era. And I just want to press on something about why do we put that future human potential? So what that potential? It's a very specific potential. It's the potential of our evolutionary next step. It's the potential of where we move to as a humanity if we truly commit to the maturation of our species. It's the potential of this more integral, more mature, more evolved, wiser consciousness. And that potential is already within us, but we need to activate it. So the, the first way to answer the great call of our Earth, the great call of our future human becoming, the great call also of this collective rite of passage that we are on is to go to that potential in you of our evolutionary next step. So let's have a look at the second pledge. And then for the second one, we say, now I'm going to apply that. Yeah? So I'm not going to just answer that call. I'm going to actually make a commitment to apply my potential for what? For co-creating thrivable worlds and futures, not for keeping business as usual or going back into the game of competition. No, we are here playing the game of life for collective thriving. So let's see on the third pledge where that moves us to. And that's about investing in our thrivability and the maturation of human consciousness. And the deeper wisdom behind this pledge is that we're not just doing this to help solve the climate crisis or to help solve for the sustainability crisis. No, we're going much further than that. We're doing that for the maturation of human consciousness. Because realize that, that unless we mature as a species, and maturing species as species will collaborate and cooperate with each other more than that they compete. Yeah? Um, if that becomes the underlying commitment, then we are truly building the foundations for a thrivable world and future, which goes much further than cleaning up the harm. So this is really about our next step, what it means as the living systems of the earth in partnership with our earth. So let us look at the fourth pledge with this. And that is about now I am contributing my talents and my passion and my wisdom for the necessary actions. Mm -hmm. Now the images that you're seeing here in all of these pledges are our first images that we are creating for the great game. And this is the Earthwise game for civilizational transformation. In the coming 90 days uh, of peace through unity, we'll be sharing a lot more about this game, how you can participate, how you can co-create. We are at the beginning phases of that because we really want to be doing that together. So I'd like to bring up one more pledge and then we want to hear from you. Let's go to the fifth one, which brings us to the second quadrant. There you go. And that is to navigate by the wisdom of living systems as my compass for thrivability. And so bringing that back to what I shared early about these living systems, how each and every one of us, we are living systems. The, the trees is a living system, but the forest is a living ecosystem. Yeah. Um, so if we start to guide our actions, our focus, our intentions, even our behaviors, by that wisdom, the wisdom of living systems, that what we're doing is what we're using as our compass now is really this collective wisdom and intelligence of billions of years of evolutionary learning. And we're not using that enough because humanity has a tendency to think it needs to reinvent <laughs> the wheel over and over again. But let's really, really work with this incredible wisdom and intelligence that we are part of that is also prompting now our next step. So looking here at the time, I'd like to now bring it back to all of us. So we still have a little bit of time, 10 minutes to hear from you. And please know that we'll be going much deeper in the constitution and the pledges over those 99 days of peace through unity as we help you to co-create and align your missions for new earth rising by just sharing with us uh, via the links in the chat. So we can yeah, stop the, the slides now. <laughs>
And what I'd like to ask you all to do now, for those of you who are not familiar with Zoom, Zoom has a wonderful digital hand. So if you're going to the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see there a button called reactions. And you click that, that is the raise hand function. And that way the hosts uh, can see and bring you on with us here. And you can also share your questions or responses in the chat. And I think it's Fernandino. Let's see here. The first question. Olivia first. That's good too. <laughs> hey, good to see you. <laughs> I think we can hear you, yes. Looks like she's muted or something. She's still um, muted. You have to allow me to unmute myself. We can hear you now. <laughs> we just heard what you said. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, first of all, as you know, I've been studying with you and Jean for years, and I am very interested in... Um, first of all, I've read all your books, and I want to say to everybody, please read The Quest of Rose and The Return of the Avatars, their award-winning books, because they give a beautiful context to the Earthwise Constitution in novel form, but it's very serious, and it takes a lot of study, but it's also fun. And my question, Anna, is I'm trying to catch up uh, because I've been doing a lot from my passion, which is the Peace Village, as you know. Yes. And um, I'm really wanting to know more about this game. And so I understand that you now have a website where we can go and learn about it. Is that right? That's right. Because yes. I'm yes. not a gamester. I'm trying to catch up with my... <laughs> God's own and my granddaughters and uh, become one overnight because I know it's very, very important. Um, do you have any suggestions for those of us who may not be used to that? Is there a book or? A a absolutely. So this is, yeah, all in stages. So what we're working towards is eventually to create an open, what's called technically an open world immersive action game, which is the kind of games that our kids love to play, our grandchildren, but with real life challenges and quests as well. But the game itself, the great game as we're seeing then, uh, has many different forms and expressions. So this is why the first step of the game doesn't require technology. It requires that we actually use these pledges to reflect okay. on what mission can I create for new earth rising and if i'm looking at the mission that i want to create for new earth rising but seeing this in the context of the pledges for example just reading through the pledges looking how it informs it how it can shift um, your mission and then look at getting interested in the mission of other people so playing each other's mission seeing how we can combine align our missions so that we can do things together that none of us can do alone um, just want to check that you are, yeah, you're still hearing me, right? Because I see, now, yeah. now I see us together. Yeah, <laughs> I don't see you, Olivia, yes. So we will be guiding you through all of those different phases. Um, and the third book will be about the great game. Um, and that will be the narrative. Yes. So as Jean was sharing, we are all gamesters, right? So think about it, it really is, how are we playing the game of life on planet Earth? A lot of people there are not right now um, playing for nature. They're not playing for the planet. They're not playing for collective thriving. They're playing into the old game and they're playing into harmful competition. They're, they're playing into business as usual. They're, they're playing into polarization. They're playing into misunderstanding. They're, they're playing into the misalignments between right. personal and well being. I yeah. have one more question in relation yes. to my mission. Yes. Uh, I've been honored to help the people of the Peace Village tell their stories, particularly about founding and also their current work for the UN, et cetera. So what you're saying is as I'm writing this book and I've finished, almost finished the first draft, 
I would go back to the pledges and sort of see how they interweave with that. That would be part of what is gaming. Is that correct? Yes. So hold the word game loosely here. So if you're not into a gaming in the technology of gaming, hold it, hold it loosely, playfully, to really Play see as, yeah. Yeah, how can I upshift it? How can I let it inform, you know? So how can I really have a massively transformative purpose, so to say? Yeah. Uh, really having the big vision in mind of what's the greatest contribution we can make to our Earth, um, to the future generations as well. And the heart of peace, so for you, it would be really about how do we play in the game of peace? the heart and the roots well, of peace. Well, it's all about peace. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Thank Wonderful you so much. You. Thank you so much, all of you, for this. Thank you. So let us hear from the, the next person. There's several. There's, let me see who's coming up first. I think there's Dorothy and there's Lisa as well. Or Dorothy. So, I'm Dorothy. I live in yes. France and Toulouse. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hi. Pleasure. And I have a question, Annalise. So I've read a couple of your information on the websites, and I see all these very famous people you're connected to. And this makes somebody, um, I'm not so famous, so it makes me quite small. However, I would like to connect. And um, I think a part of this was already answered in the last question. So during the game, we get a, a chance to explain what we, what our potential is. So I think I have a quite high potential and I'd love to share it. But in this strange world at the moment, we are a little bit, sometimes a little bit isolated. And so I'm very happy to be part of this group today. Thank you. And please, please know that there is no ranking here. There's no famous yeah. or no famous. <laughs> Everyone matters. I mean, it's just wonderful to see you here and like you've taken the courage to speak your voice and to trust in yourself. So this is where, you know, the game that we are playing is standing in circle. This is the, the game of unity, standing in circle where everyone is honored, everyone's voice is, is valued. And indeed, we are also now creating the technologies that make it possible for everyone to have a voice and have an input in that. So that as we are building the game, also the, the bigger game, that video games that our kids will, for example, play, mm -hmm. that everyone who's going through that process with us has also a voice in that. We feel that's really important because... Thank um, you. Yeah, the creativity that emerges from the field of us, which is, mm -hmm. to me, so much richer than just one person, like we're doing here. So thank you. Thank, thank you me. very much. It's like Lisa. Oh, yes, let's bring Lisa back. And if, uh, I, if, if Anita can be shown with us, me, us, the three of us would be really nice as well. Because maybe Anita uh, actually has some wisdom for the next question from Lisa as well. <laughs> Uh, oh, 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 now we can't see you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but I you're there. How, how, uh, how um, the visual perfection of this moment, Annalise um, and Anita, I just uh, feeling the, the family, the higher family in this cosmic co-creative joy of being able to be the, um, like Benjamin Franklin was with uh, the Constitution in the US, you know, 250 years ago, we're in this incredible moment of co-creation and birth and joy, because this baby that we've been holding in the womb of our heart is now emerging, the crown of it, <laughs> like with the coronavirus, the crown is coming out. And I just want to say, Oh my God! <laughs> God is herself, and being that that creative force, and I'm just so grateful, and I couldn't contain my joy, but just to say thank you, and oh my Goddess, it's all happening. Together, I love your joy. <laughs> it, it's contagious, and that's what we need. Yeah. Yes. To, yes. That's what, that's what we need it. And your joy coming in right after the last person. I just want to stress, like, um, I don't know if you can see my hands. We're one hoop of life. It's not like this. That's the old thing of hierarchy and class. We're one. No one's higher. No one's no lower. And part of what gives my whole being to this effort, to this uh, future happening now, yes. is that 
we're going to make this real and that the imbalance of the old is going to not be able to stand because we're all in cooperation. We all understand it's not only out here. Nature's in us. We are part of nature. Nature's part of us. We are part of each other and we all impact each other. So thank you for your joy. <laughs> I, I join, I join. I need to end that. Thank you so much, Lisa, for your joy and your love and always being there on the journey with us together. <laughs> Great. So let us hear from the next person. If you can share go with ahead, us Monica. Go, go ahead, Monica. Ask oh, a question. Hello. Yes, hi. Um, <laughs> I am loving following the joyous response. And I was watching on Facebook, and I decided I really wanted to come in the room to touch base with everyone and the special holding of you, Anita, today. And um, I just really am excited. And yet my mission is very different, and it's not a joyous one, but it is an urgent one. And mm -hmm. it is a world free of nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. And I just want to invite all of you yes. to join me with your prayers on Nuclear Prayer Day because all the politics isn't working, the threats, the money, the waste, the destruction. And it's not a joyous topic, but we have to look and raise it and lift the fog to know that our prayers are needed. So I just invite you, you'll find more about Nuclear Prayer Day, August the 6th. It's a day we must remember um, and yet look forward and, and to build a community so that we can shift the money, the anger, the, the acceptance of death and total destruction. I mean, to me, if we can move in this direction, we will have as a prayer that we use a lot, lift the yes. fog of atomic darkness. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share it and to invite your prayers, but more importantly, to bring in the joy in the prayers so that we shift from one another, because I truly believe if we had recognized the limits and the stuff around nuclear weapons, gun control itself can be addressed. Yes. Anger this is and so fighting. important. So thank you. Thank you. Don't go yet. Stay with us for a minute because now we can make it concrete. Exactly how we play each other's mission. So Anne Baring and Elizabeth Williams have been playing the planches, using the planches to create their mission, which is the urgent call to all of humanity to stop war and violence now. And they put it out as a, as a deep call to the woman. Your mission aligns directly with that. So let us align this now together, their mission, your mission, with our mission in supporting this. So we, this is how we're going to create that field. So please join us for the next event. Share also with us the link to your mission so we can put really it in here right it. now. Yes. Fantastic. And then we'll also include that again in the communication in these 99 days. So this is the spirit. This is it. This is yes. what we're here for, World Unity Week. And Thank we, you for all your contributions, because we have to celebrate the little steps. And I think we'll be turning it back now to Ben. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. What an amazing um, example of cooperation for our first program for day five today. Uh, beautiful um, uh, presentation about the Earthwise Constitution and the 16 pledges. And I love, uh, Anna Luce, that the whole um, intention here is to support everybody in their missions for the 99 days. That is really what it's all about. We're in a place we haven't been before. It is so exciting. I love the enthusiasm uh, that was running through the room here. So just want to really thank uh, everybody, our speakers and people who stood forward to ask questions and offer uh, an input. Thank you, Anna Lou Smitsman. Thank you, uh, Auntie Anita Sanchez, Mariana Bozasan, and of course, uh, Miss the Madam Jean Houston for a wonderful program. Go and look up Earthwise Constitution, get onto the pledges. Um, this is uh, an important part of the new earth rising. It's been great, Anita and Annalise, to have you with us today. Thank you. Yay, that was cool.